All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about tariffs and more specifically based around electric bikes, electric scooters, one wheels, anything e-mobility related coming from China. Now I know this tariff situation will be affecting EVs coming from China, such as cars, and that's basically what this tariff was more geared towards. It just so happens that bikes and all these smaller e-mobility devices have been lumped into it. With that being said, the tariff rate actually is gonna be going from 7.5% to 25% in 2024 and even higher as we get further into it. Now, if you're into a certain bike and you're waiting and you're on the fence, I encourage you to get it like right now because some of these brands aren't notifying people that they're changing the price, but some brands have. They put out newsletters saying, hey, the tariffs have come up and we're gonna be passing that cost on to you, which I'll go over one of the newsletters here later in the video. Now, I do wanna say, I don't claim to know everything there is to know about tariffs. I only know the information that I absorbed from the internet, from both sides, bring it to the center to formulate my own opinion, and I encourage you guys to do the same. First article we have here, and I'm gonna be linking all these articles in the description below for you to be able to check out on your own time. But the first article is from Fast Company. E-bike prices are about to get a lot more expensive, and they are not wrong. In May, the Biden administration slapped new tariffs on a range of Chinese goods, including a 100% levy on electric vehicles. Now, what that means is they are more geared towards electric cars, such as a brand called BYD. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that company. I'm not going to dive into the electric car market right now, but they are coming in or trying to come into the U.S. market. And if they do, they will disrupt the market. Absolutely will. They'll probably put brands like GM and Ford and and Chevy, all these American brands out of business, in my personal opinion. Tesla would probably be one of the only ones to survive. And the only reason why is because the BYD vehicles, they're able to produce them at such a low rate when it comes to like financials. I mean, you can buy a BYD vehicle for like $15,000, have decent range, it's an electric vehicle. Um, but what I find kind of funny is those vehicles will come over, be a lot cheaper, even if you got a $7,500 tax credit on, let's just say a Ford Mach-E, you still wouldn't be able to be cheaper than the BYD. And that's the reason why these tariffs are being implemented because the US government, my personal opinion is trying to protect their investment that they bailed out those car companies for, I want to say like at least twice. So uh, that's a protected investment in my personal opinion. So they're trying to protect the market. Um, I'm, I'm for free market. Just everybody kind of just do their thing um, because I want the best quality product uh, at the end of the day, and whether it be American or Chinese or Japanese or German, whatever it might be. I've, I've owned several different vehicles when it comes to that. I'm going to link this. This article in the description below for you to be able to read on your own, basically it talks about the same 7.5% to 25% increase. And it says starts in 2026, but it's already started, um, which we'll go over in a moment. The next article is from The Verge. Electric bikes are about to get more expensive and the timing couldn't be worse. They're not wrong. The Biden administration's tariffs are aimed at Chinese-made goods, including e-bikes and batteries. But if we're going to fight climate change, we need e-bikes more than ever. And I personally couldn't disagree with that statement more. Um, if you're going to use an e-bike over a combustion engine car, then maybe, but if you're going to use an e-bike over a traditional bike, or if you're trying to fight climate change, then you should probably ride an acoustic bike. Um, that's the ultimate way, but that's for a later discussion. We're not going to get into that right now. I'm going to put this article in the description below for you to be able to check out, kind of compare notes. This is what I like to encourage people to do. Compare how these articles are written because a lot of these, uh, writers have bias, right? So you want to compare how these articles are written, see where they're coming from, formulate your own opinion. As we get to the next part now, um, I originally wanted to come up with this, this video to talk to you guys because I originally saw a post on Facebook from, we'll go over this in a second, Velotrick is one of the first brands to actually put out a statement saying that they're going to be passing it on. But I came across it right here. It says, hey, Velotrick, why the $200 price increase on the Discover 2? And you got people putting their comments in there and they want to put, um, blame whether it be either side. You know, I'm not here to blame either side. I'm here to just bring the facts to you. So then it got me kind of curious. Like, did they really raise the price? And I look and I'm like, hmm, yeah, $18.99. My video that I put out on this bike was $16.99. So that's in the description below. And if you're into the Velotrek, I believe my code still works to be able to help you get money off. Um, I don't know if they've terminated those codes or any of that stuff. Feel free to try them out. And then I checked out Ride One Up to see if Ride One Up changed their price. Let's let's refresh this page. And they haven't yet, which I also haven't seen a newsletter from Ride One Up. I'm using these two as an example for like baseline electric bikes. They haven't changed their price yet. Then I go to Lunacycle 
because I own a Talaria. When I first got my Talaria, I got it for under 3,000. I believe it was like 2,950. And then the price jumped up to 3,250. And then it jumped up to 3,500, I think, for the red edition here. So there it is, 3,250 there. This is the one I got. But I haven't seen the price increase from Lunacycle yet. So if you're on the fence about getting a Talaria or any other electric bike from here, the Enduro bikes, um, excuse me, uh, foldable bikes, uh, maybe even a Suron or something like that, definitely jump on that now before they end up implementing these price changes here. I would imagine these these prices will probably go up maybe even higher than $200. And $200 is a pretty big price jump. I mean, even for even for Discover 2, that's a pretty big price jump. But they, they pass the cost on to the consumer for a reason. And let's get back over to that. It says, hey, everyone, we hope you're enjoying the ride. We want to inform you about some recent changes due to increase in tariffs on EVs under Section 301 of Trade Act of 1974. We have adjusted our pricing starting from June 1st. So they've already adjusted their pricing. And I kind of wish that they would have announced this earlier to encourage more sales, probably. That probably would have encouraged way more sales. Um, it says this change helps us to maintain the quality and innovation you expect from Velotric as we're committed to building a better ride with cutting edge performance, unparalleled comfort and exceptional safety for you all, which I think is a really good point for them to drive home. But I kind of wish, like I said, that they would have put a letter out saying, hey, this is what's going to be happening. You, you better get into it now um, if you really want to get this deal. Honestly, it would probably be really good for other brands to do that now if they haven't already. So then I see that post and I see this one. It says uh, maybe something has already been posted about this. But why did Discover 2 price just go up $200? I kept trying to pre-order one last week from their website and the price was $16.99, but I couldn't get my transaction to go through even though it said the pre-ordering was possible. I had $50 off coupon. Like I said, if you need a coupon, I have one in the description below. Uh, now I can order one, but the bike went up $200 and it's so frustrating. And she goes on to say where she's from. And a lot of people sound off in the comments. I, mean, I think there's like 70 some, 72 comments here. And um, one of the comments I actually found kind of funny. It says, I know this is a free country and all, but it would be great to keep this community free from stench of politics. And I, what I think the people don't understand these days is you can't get away from politics. Like it's, it's a part of culture. I know it's, it is what it is. It's sad to say like every single thing you buy, every single thing you wear, every single thing that you do. I mean, like, you know, what shouldn't be like this hat shouldn't be a political thing. Like this is, I call it my team hat. I, I love the United States of America always will. But the flag is so politicized these days. Everything's politicized is my point. Like a car that you drive. I had this conversation with Kyle from area 13. Um, we were talking about EVs and we're starting a new podcast, by the way, him and I together, we we're talking about EVs and, and, uh, I, I'm like, dude, EVs are so politicized. It's crazy. It's just a car. Like people are like the left hates it. The right hates it. They, they want to hate each other for driving something, whether it be diesel or this. I'm like, dude, it's just a car. And he's like, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, I didn't buy one to try to be green or reduce my carbon footprint. And he said the best line I ever heard. It was, uh, he's like, the only green I care about is the green in my wallet. And I was like, dude, that's spot on. You can't get away from politics when it comes to stuff. Everything is going to be politicized no matter what you do, what you say. And all you can do is what I said in the beginning is try to absorb your information from both sides, bring it to the center, formulate your own opinion, and don't get stuck in an echo chamber. Don't. It's really, really easy to get stuck in one and start to like divide and hate one thing and hate another. And it's like me, you can't even fit me in a box. That's why I think frustrates a lot of people is like, I don't fit into a box. I know some people try to put me into a box it is what it is. I want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions, not just on what I just said there, but also the tariff situation. Um, do you think, I, I mean, I've, I've seen people complain like, Hey, like I'm, I'm mad that brands are passing the cost on to the consumer, but like, you have to understand, like Velatrix said it perfectly. Like if you want to continue to see that brand innovation and, and pushing forward new technology and bikes, they're, they're passing that cost on, which in turn, it really isn't that much. $200 isn't that much, but it could be a make or break moment for somebody that wants to get up to a Velatrix, but can't now and they will have to go back down to maybe an Amazon brand or something like eight, nine hundred dollar range. Um, with that being said, I want to hear your guys thoughts in the comment section below. If there are any new information you guys learned about tariffs, put those in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, drop a like. If you love it, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you next one.